Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. A terrible attack in Chesterfield Township, and tonight we are learning WWJ overnight news anchor Jim Matthews was the man killed. His family also injured, including his two children, ages 10 and 5. Chesterfield Township police said the man who killed Matthews and injured his family tried to kill himself, but was not successful. Mara McDonald live in Chesterfield tonight. Uh, Mara, you just spoke with Matthews family. I sure did, Devin. I spoke with his brother, Joe, who says tonight if every if if Everybody could do just one thing, which would be pray for Jim's two small children. You can see behind me, police are still processing um, the condo, which is the crime scene here. And what those two children had to endure in here can only be described as a nightmare. Jim Matthews spent years on WWJ as their solid, dependable overnight news anchor. Matthews was his on-air name. His legal name was Jim Nikolai. And we spoke to his brother Joe this evening about his brother's pride in working at J-Radio. He was so excited when he got back. I was so happy for him when he got into WWJ. Um, since he was a little kid, he's wanted to be a, a DJ. Colleagues describe him as an absolute professional. He lived here at this Chesterfield Township condo with the 35-year-old mother of their two children, a 10-year-old boy and 5-year-old girl. When police arrived on the scene, it was that 35-year-old and the daughter who had run into the parking lot looking for help. A 35-year-old white female had escaped with her 5-year-old daughter. She was suffering from stab wounds at that time. The five-year-old was also injured. When police got inside, they found Nikolai had been killed, his 10-year-old son in a closet. We also found a 10-year-old white male bound and suffering from blunt force trauma. Sources say that little boy was beaten with a hammer and left for dead in that closet. They say he fought back against the man police say is responsible for it all. A 54 year old friend of the family who tried to kill himself by taking an overdose after the attack. Pray for his children. Uh, his children are the ones that need the prayers um, and support. Back here live tonight, those two children, 10 and 5, and their mother are all being treated for their injuries at a local hospital. That little boy's injuries are critical at this point. As far as the motivation for all of this, uh, Chester Hill Township Police at this point merely classifying it um, as a domestic issue. We're live in Chesterfield Township tonight. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. Just horrendous, Mara. Thoughts with the family and, of course, with our colleagues over at WWJ as well. Faculty members at Eastern Michigan University voting in favor of a new four-year deal with the university. Members ratified the contract with a 96% approval. The new deal comes with pay raises and retirement and health care protections. Faculty went on strike for three days before reaching the tentative agreement. The Eastern Michigan University Board of Regents will review and then vote on the agreement before it's finalized. Waterford students recovering tonight after being exposed to pepper spray at Pierce Middle School today. Yeah, a letter was sent out to parents informing them about a student discharging a can of pepper spray. Waterford Fire Department was called to determine the safety of the classroom and of the students. Some students have been reporting nausea, some irritation in the eyes and throat. Tonight, school district is reminding students if any are caught with a dangerous instrument, they will face serious discipline. We're kicking off the first weekend of fall with some dry skies. See if we can stay dry all weekend here. Let's check in with Kim Adams. Kim. Oh, the pressure. No. Yes. <laughs> no, we're not going to stay dry all weekend, unfortunately. But one of the days is drier than the other, and that is tomorrow. You'll have plenty of time this weekend to get out and enjoy some outdoor activities. It's not a washout by any means, but we do expect some spotty showers. It's 47 right now in Ann Arbor, 50 in Lapeer, 51 in Monroe. This is a live look from our Ann Arbor Sky Cam. And if you're headed to the big house tomorrow, chance of a spotty shower maybe in the morning for tailgating, then dry for the rest of the game if you're going to the Michigan State game because we have to be fair here. 63 degrees in the afternoon can't rule out again just a spotty shower but it, it, this is not like a downpour that will come on Sunday. So if you have outdoor plans again Sunday is going to be the better of the two days. The other big story temperatures over the next several days will be well below average. Our normal high is 72 and we don't even I mean, these are not highs. These are the I'm sorry. These are not lows. These are the high temperatures for the next seven days. We also have Tropical Storm Ian, the first storm that could hit 
the U.S. and Florida. So we're going to talk about that coming up. All right, Kim. The gubernatorial race getting heated with the election now 46 days away. Republican nominee Tudor Dixon on the campaign trail today with events all over the state, including here in Metro Detroit. But Dixon coming under fire for comments she made about the kidnapping plot against Governor Whitmer. The sad thing is that Gretchen will tie your hands, put a gun to your head, and ask if you're ready to talk. For someone so worried about being kidnapped, Gretchen Whitmer sure is good at taking business hostage and holding it for ransom. The Whitmer campaign, quick to respond today, releasing this statement, reading in part, threats of violence are no laughing matter, and the fact that Dixon spent the day making joke after joke about it shows that she's absolutely unfit to serve in public office. When someone shows you who they are, believe them. You have perhaps noticed that debates have been hard to find this election cycle. That should make Sunday morning's flashpoint all the more worth your time. Congresswoman Alyssa Slotkin and State Senator Tom Barrett are both vying to represent Michigan's newly drawn 7th District. I'm happy to say they will join me for their first face-to-face -face debate of the campaign. Slotkin and Barrett, Sunday morning at 10 on Flashpoint. Iconic business in Port Huron is closing after nearly 100 years of serving the community. As Paula Tupman explains, this is not the only large Port Huron employer in this industry closing its doors. Just shy of its 100th birthday, Dunn Paper, an icon and large employer in Port Huron, announces it's closing its doors for good. Makers of sustainable paper, specialty paper, and private label packaging, the company, which has survived near closings and business scrapes in the past, has struggled since last March to weather the economy. Its slogan, Making Tomorrow's Papers Today, ends after 98 years of service. It's just so sad. It it's, it's another piece of Port Huron that isn't going to be here anymore. 100 employees call this sprawling stretch of Lake Huron shoreline their workplace in a bedroom community where many can walk their children to school and then walk to work. But according to James Freed, the chief admin officer and city manager of Port Huron, job one is resituating those employees without having to relocate them before the November 18th close date. We want to partner with the Economic Development Alliance of St. Clair County with Michigan Works to make sure that we can make a seamless transition from their jobs at Dunn Paper to new industries. A lot of employers greatly seek and value the talents and the worth ethic that the Dunn Paper employees have. Dunn Paper has six other locations, including a site in Menominee, Michigan. And while the other facilities will remain open, management has said through published statements, it has become too difficult to generate positive cash flow. And a source from inside the company told me skyrocketing costs of paper pulp and energy moved faster than their ability to adjust their pricing. In August 2021, Domtar Corp, another large employer with 200 workers, announced it would be closing its Port Huron mill. What could be a sign of the times, but who's left to make the paper for that sign? Now, of course, there's also some question about what's going to happen to this mammoth facility, but this is prime real estate on a great lake. That's Lake Huron right over there. And the city manager believes this property will also be prime for sale or redevelopment. Reporting from Port Huron, Paula Tutman, Local 4.